What's up? What's up, bro? All right. Um, let me know if my mic sounds good. I did turn the noise suppression up a little bit. Oh, that sounds good. All right, cool. Uh, ask away, I guess. All right. First question. Uh, when did you first? When did you hear about FNAF? When did I hear about FNAF? Okay, this is a good one, actually. I have a picture for this one, um, if you want to show it. But this is Halloween of, um, it would have been October of 2014, right? Um, now, I was, I think, seven years old. I was in third grade, I know that. And my mom wouldn't let me get it on my phone. So I was actually watching my friend play. Um, after the after we went trick-or-treating so if you look in the, the dms you'll see that's me on the left in the in a mario costume that's my homie ricky in the center playing fnaf 1 on his phone at that point i i don't think fnaf 2 was out yet and if it was out it had just come out but i was i was looking at it for the first time i actually started playing in like 2015 and then i didn't i stopped for a long time because you know I played one to four, and then when Sister Location came out, I was kind of done with the series. And then in like 2020, before YouTube, over COVID, I wanted to beat all the max modes, but I was I was pretty stupid back then, so I didn't know the strats. So I beat FNAF one with the old strat back then, and then I tried to do FNAF two with um, the Oh Look It's FNAF strat, and I couldn't do it. It took me like, I, I spent like 10 hours and I couldn't do it. I'll probably beat it with the old strat soon today. Or not today, um, just soon. And then, um, when I started my YouTube channel, I wanted to make a video where I beat all of the max modes in FNAF. I came back and beat all of them, at least one to four. And it was originally planned to be one video, but one of my friends said, you should split it into four videos. And then I was like, I'll make it like an AI guide too. And that's how those videos were born. That's how I blew up. So that's how I, guess where I am today. Oh. Uh, what was your first max mode? My first max mode would have been um, FNAF 1, 420, like most people. But if you want to go off of like um, fan game max modes, it would have been Blood Sub. Oh man, that's voice crack. I'm saying that again. Um, it would have been Blood 720, which at the time was 29th on the list. It took me about 12 hours, and now it got moved to 35. Currently on the main list. Uh, why did you start YouTube? Why did I start? This is a good one. Okay. So, are you familiar with the Dark, the Dark Souls games? Okay, so I'm super into Dark Souls. Um, I was into Dark Souls before I got back into FNAF, and I was platinuming, plat, platinuming, platinum, I don't know, getting all the achievements in the games, 100%ing them, right? So 100% of DS1 took me about 120 hours. I 100%ed three, and then I went to go and do two. And I'm sitting there getting the last item for the platinum for DS2, and I'm like, wow. No one cares that I just did this. Like, I just spent 80 hours of my life playing Dark Souls 2, trying to get all the achievements. And no one cares that I did this. So I'm like, you know what? When I do all these crazy things in games, I should record them and I should make videos out of them. So that was when I got the idea to do um, Cuphead, all of it without dying. And that was my first video. So it all started from trying to get all the achievements in Dark Souls 2 and realizing that no one really cared because I'm not showing anyone like those Steam achievements don't matter. So why not make it entertaining and make a video out of it? So that was how the whole challenge idea was born. Nice. Uh, what, what editing program do you use? Okay, um, I use Premiere Pro. I think Premiere Pro is the easiest to well at one point i used vegas um before i started youtube just to make like posts but then i switched to premiere pro and it is in my opinion the easiest to learn and um you can do so much with it i think it's a great program um but yeah it's very reliable it's only crashed on me a few times yeah premiere pro 
And I guess Photoshop too, for like a few like thumbnails and graphics in Premiere. But as far as video editing goes, Premiere Pro. What other, uh, what other stuff do you do besides FNAF? As far as just games or hobbies in general? Uh, doesn't matter. Okay, well, as far as like outside of video games, just hobbies in my life, um, I'm a, I'm a big gym guy. Um, it doesn't look like it, um, but I've been working out for like two, three years. I just try to keep at like a pretty low. Uh, I'm trying to be as much muscle as I can. So um, I have really, really low body fat percentage. So I work out, I weight train like three, four times a week and I run every day. I, I love doing that. And I also have a motorcycle um, that I, I just ride for fun. Uh, I, don't, I don't really drive my car too often. I ride with whichever I can go. It's a fun way to go. It's more gas efficient. Um, aside from that, just hanging out with friends. Um, but actually on like, like playing video games that aren't FNAF. Um, I'm super into Dark Souls, as I said before. Any platformer game I'll probably enjoy. I, I love Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight's an amazing game. But I do have like a top three games of all time. And that would be Super Mario Galaxy 2, Donkey Kong Country Returns, and Kirby's Return of Dreamland. Those are my big three. Um, I, I was a wee kid, so I grew up with those games. And any platforming game, I'll probably enjoy. Has anything uh, made you almost quit playing FNAF games as a whole? No, but something has made me quit YouTube, or almost quit YouTube. Uh, this might be a better, better for a later question. Um, so I'll answer this one directly. I will say what my breaking points were for like the hardest things I've done. So the most, I'll have to actually look at my videos if you, if you'll give me a second. Um, just so I can recount all that I've done. Okay, um, looking back, FNAF 1 through 4 was fine, Sister Location was fine, um, the Dark Souls video took me a while, but that, that was whatever. I, I didn't really do anything super hard until, um, how players removed randomness from FNAF's hardest challenge, and that was minus 7, but that still wasn't too bad, um, the first hard challenge that I did on YouTube for the main channel would have been is it possible to 100% three FNAF games at the same time but that only took me like eight hours I think it was like a whole day to do all of it however the FNAF lock was not quitting FNAF but man that was a rough experience um so when I was trying to do the FNAF lock challenge I was super behind for all the deadlines and I talk about it a lot in that video but um Every day I would get up and I would just play FNAF for about 10 hours every single day straight. Um, it was absolutely miserable because if you watch the end of that video, you see that the statistics for how much time I spent in each game, FNAF 3 was 21 of the 25 hours. So I was sitting there playing FNAF 3 for like 20 straight hours almost. It was miserable. and. At that like nightmare foxy death, there was times where I was like, man, is this really worth it? But then like you look at the um, what people, the views and what people just like to see. I'm like, people like to see this stuff, so I'm going to keep going with it. And like the, vi the editing process, too, it's rough. But as long as people still enjoy the content and show the support they do right now, there's no way I would ever stop because I have such big plans for FNAF um, and I have a whole story I have planned out you'll see it, it'll be super cool but um I'm not gonna stop until that's done um rat and cat despite being the hardest max one I've done didn't I, it wasn't actually that bad it was like 10 hours um the six hour challenge that was I almost decided to quit on that one so there's a lot of story behind this one the six hour challenge video I made in two and a half days because 
it was a huge race to see who could get the first video for real-time FNAF out. And I was really late to that race. So I was on vacation, right? And the day I come back, I get a I get a message from Kingpin the Bowler. And he tells me that this guy named Sir55 just beat FNAF um, 420 in real time. He did the whole game in real time. And I'm like, how have I never had this idea before? This is like a free challenge. And it's a super, be a super cool title and video, right? So I'm like, I need to grind this video out and get it out before anyone else on YouTube does. And considering that he's already done the challenge, I need to go into like overdrive. So I got home that day and I played FNAF, the six hour mode for about 16 hours on like four hours of sleep and then edited the video in like 15 hours. And a normal video takes like 30 hours to edit. So I was, I was like going, I was going pretty much insane. I was, all of my attention was focused on getting this done. And I was the first person to upload the 420 mode in real time on YouTube. So I had to like time crunch as hard as I could, like forgo literally everything else to get that video out as fast as I could to be the first one to do it. If I had the idea earlier, that wouldn't have had to happen. But that was the hardest that I'd ever pushed myself for a challenge. I, um, I assume you watched that video? Yeah, I did. Okay, so you you remember the, the tragic 550 fail, right? Yeah. The reason that I was so tweaked out over that wasn't because... I mean, of, of course it was horrible having to spend 5 hours and 50 minutes. It really sucked. It's really boring. But um, I was so scared that I'd have to play another six hours and he would get the video out first and I wouldn't be the first one to do it. That was why I was so terrified because that means that those were those were six hours that I couldn't be editing the video. That was why I was really scared. Not because, because like if it was, if I if I had infinite time to do the challenge, I would have just slept and waited till tomorrow and I would have been fine. But in that case, no, not at all. But it made the video a lot better in the end. But yeah, that's the, that was the closest that I ever got to like totally breaking down, but it wasn't because of quitting. It was more so because I need to get this shit out now. That was the reason. What's your favorite content creator outside of FNAF? Oh, this is an amazing question. I, oh man. You have to give me a little bit. Um, oh. Summoning Salt is definitely up there. I, I take a lot of inspiration from him. But um, are we counting like, could I say someone like like an OG YouTuber that kind of fell off, but like their prime? You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Back in the day, old SMG4, I don't know if you know who that is, was the funniest YouTuber ever. I loved old SMG4. Like 2014 SMG4, he's definitely up there. Um. Let me just look through my subscriptions list for a little bit so I can actually. Um, Wendigoon is really good. Uh, I mentioned him in the video. Um, I don't think I can name one definitive content creator, but I can definitely name a, a few really good ones. Corey Kenshin's up there. Um, Alpha Oxtrot is up there, and uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf makes the best video essays I've probably ever heard. There's definitely a, a ton more that I could mention, but those are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head. And of course, like old Filthy Frank and like those guys are awesome, but like I can't think of much right now. What is your uh, favorite like main FNAF? Game? Um, FNAF 2. I think FNAF 2... Are, are you counting Ultimate Custom Night, or just, like, 1 to 6? Um, all of them, even Steel Wool games. Okay. Um, in that case, I would say... Well, I've actually never played any Steel Wool game. Matter of fact, I have zero hours in Help Wanted, 1 or 2, and Security Breach. Um, but I... Out of all of the games that I have played, um, I would say that my favorite is Ultimate Custom Night, just because it has the best gameplay in my opinion. But um, after that would be two. 
I think FNAF 2 is ruined by people thinking it's way too hard. Um, FNAF 2 has, in my opinion, the best setting of any FNAF game. It has it had the best, in my opinion, the best era of the lore. Because I I like grew when I really got into the FNAF community back in 2014-15 was when FNAF 2 had just launched. And you could upload a video of the most obscure theory about the most random thing, and it's a super small detail, and it, everyone would love it. I'd love it. I'd watch it. That was like Smike's era of content. And that was super fun. Um, so my favorite era of the game, it introduced the 8-bit minigames, and also I, I like the gameplay. There is no FNAF game, aside from Ultimate Custom Night, that has had as much strategy development as FNAF 2. There has been, if I can remember correctly, seven different strategies that have been developed over time um, to where we are today with Raiden, Stratton, minus seven. So it has, in my opinion, the best gameplay out of the main out of the main six, best additions to the lore and best setting. So I'm going to say FNAF 2. For the people who aren't in the Discord, uh, where did the name The Bones 5 come from? Okay, so... When I was four years old, I had a, um, my parents said I wanted a dog, so we just, we just went to go get one. And I got this Shizu Maltese, and I just had the idea of like, I don't know, I was four years old. I guess I'd just been learning things, and I had the idea of dogs like bones. Like, that's just what it is. When you see a dog in a cartoon, it's usually holding like a cartoon bone, like Tom and Jerry type. So I was like, dogs like bones. I was like, why not just name him Bones? So I I chose the, the dog and I named him Bones and he's still well and good kicking today. He's 15 and yet he can still run, jump, um, can't hear anymore, but he's like very active. It's it's, it's nice. Um, But the actual name, the Bones 5, has a little bit more story to it. So when I was... Uh, when I was in middle school, my gamer tag was Kirby111, and then my real name 111 sometimes. Um, that was just how how I what my tag was back then. And then I was entering like a Smash tournament, my first Smash Brothers Ultimate tournament, because we hosted them near my school. It was a super cool group of um, group of people. Shout out to them; they were awesome. Um, they shaped the way I am today. But I'm like there and I'm like, well, Kirby's a character in Smash. It'd be kind of stupid because I'm a wolf main to have like a, a tag of Kirby 111 and play wolf. So I was like, I need a new tag. And then the bones just like stuck because even back then, I don't know if there's any videos of it still around, but the name, I wasn't that good. I was like top four in the area at that time. Really old Smash Ultimate. But people would like chant the bones like they, they they would be like the what the who the when and they'd say the bones shout out to brennan he was the guy who started that um and that was that was so much fun so i kept that name and everyone loved that name the bones but the five wasn't there yet um back in middle school i have a group of friends and still today uh, my closest friends it hasn't changed and um, we called ourselves the five because it was just five of us and um i wanted to add a number at the end of my name and because the the name just the bones was taken on like instagram and all other profiles so i put a five on the end because it was the five and that was how the bones five was born and it has like a double meaning too because the five the roman numeral for five is a v and um when my parents are not when my friends would ride motorcycles we'd wear jackets that had valhalla on the back so it's like a double stand for a V for Valhalla and a V for five. So I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, that's how I got the name of the Bones 5. What's your favorite FNAF fan game? Ooh. <sighs> if this is counting, okay. I'm gonna say that it's this is all an umbrella and it would be fine to Candy's 3. Um, I think people say Fine to Candy's 3 is boring. I do get it a little bit. But like I'm considering all the all the different mods and all that. I just when I'm playing FNAF games, it's nice sometimes to just turn your brain off. Um, like when you're playing Ultimate Custom Night, you have to remember 
GMB cycle, uh, death coin sequence, Toy Freddy, uh, duct intervals, 0.5s, a lot of stuff, right? So when you're playing FNAC3, the cycle is brain dead easy. The only thing you have to worry about is tracking them with your flashlight. And sometimes I like to just not have to think when I'm playing a game, just like sit back and chill. Um, and FNAC3 is that. Um, I can just chill and just track them with my mouse. Um, recently, I did a, a pixel pointer, all attacks. Um, maybe I'll do Shadow Rat pixel pointer soon. But I think it's super interesting because there's this whole iceberg of like FNAC3. The progression is insane. There's so much lore to how good people have gotten this game from like the original. I think it's super interesting. A lot of people will critique it for being boring. And honestly, I haven't played that many fan games um, as of current. But if I had to say one, it'd be FNAC3. Who's your favorite FNAF content creator if you have them? Oh, um, now, if we're talking like modern day, I don't actually watch a lot of like challenge video like structured challenge videos because i make them so it's like my whole job i spend like eight hours a day making these videos so i wouldn't just want to watch another of that like i usually watch thing like other games um but if someone makes like a a max mode completion i'll watch that like i'm more interested in that i wouldn't watch like a whole structured video um some people that come to mind of course brayden and frogger just like people that make completion videos um and like super cool green runs but if i had to say a fnaf content creator i'm gonna go back in the day i'm gonna say this is like 2014 2015 era game theory was peak back then like the first four fnaf theories from game theory aside from the first one uh were absolutely amazing that was like the best content ever and then I really liked 8-Bit Gaming back then when it was Ryan and other Ryan. That was always a fun channel to watch. And like Corey Kenshin, Dashy. They're not FNAF creators, but they played a lot of it back then. But I couldn't really say I have a modern favorite FNAF content creator. I don't really watch any people in my space. Like, because uh, I'm, it's all, all I do. So when I want to take a break and watch on YouTube, I'll probably watch something else that isn't FNAF. So can't really answer that one, sorry. This is a good one. Um, so it's a huge evolution. I'm not a furry. I will always be called a furry and I'm okay with being called a furry because they're not bad people. I think making fun of furries is kind of gay. It's like, it's a pretty old thing. Like that was like a 2016 thing, SJW type. But um, it was an evolution from the Doge dog. So back in like 20, for almost my entire career online, I had a Doge profile picture, just the straight up original Doge image. And then when the Cheems dog came around, the smiling Cheems dog, I thought that was a super funny picture. So that was my um, image for a while. And then back in like 2020, I got super into Naruto. Um, and I still am, Naruto is one of my favorite animes ever. And there's a group in Naruto called the Akatsuki and they wear these like cloaks, these black and red cloaks, and they look super sick. One of the coolest villain groups ever. Um, and I was like, yo, for my profile picture on whatever, I should be like the Cheems dog with an Akatsuki cloak. And you'll see in my Minecraft skin, um, that's where that came from. So I, I commissioned my homie Brennan um, in like 2021 to draw a picture. And I can actually find the original image. It might take me a little bit, um, if I still have it on hand, hold on. I do, yeah. So this was the, the first image that he drew um, of the Cheems dog. And you can see the resemblance um, to the actual image. Hold on. So it was the Cheems dog in the Akatsuki cloak. And then over time, it kind of evolved. That actually was my first profile picture on YouTube was that original 2021 image. And then when I started growing, 
I wanted to have a more like distinct character. I didn't want it to be like just a rip from Naruto. So I, so we, Brendan and I got together and we designed the official um, Bones character render, and then he made a profile picture for it. And I can send what the official one looks like now. Um, hold on a second. So we designed that character based off of um, the jackets that I wear in real life, kind of my real life fashion sense. And then, um, yeah, so it was all an evolution from the Doge character to what it is now. What is your favorite and least favorite FNAF challenge on the list that you've beaten? Ooh, okay. Um, do you mean out of enjoyment or like just the overall aura and like the video it made or just like enjoyment enjoyment so while i was doing it okay that's a better way to phrase it um the challenge that i had the least fun with was the most recent one because of you in the earlier question i kind of told you why um my favorite challenge that's a tough one um I'd have to say it would be between Rat and Cat all challenges was like legendary because I fluked that from 3 a.m. with mouse acceleration on. Um, and that was like unheard of. And it was, of course, my hardest challenge on the max mode list. But a really cool video was the FNAF 4 No Doors one because it um, it wasn't so much as like a hard smash your head against the wall challenge. It was like a think outside the box challenge. And those are always fun when they're not actually hard. You just have to think about them. Um, and the, a combination of those two, and what I have to say my favorite one was, is the multi FNAF beating um, 420, 1020 and aggressive nightmare all at the same time. And the reason for that is people, a lot of people didn't like the strategies in that video. The fact that I was using the Foxy glitch and FGP to make it possible. And I say screw that, because I think it's super cool that those glitches exist. Because when you're able to find all these different ways to break a game apart, that's the coolest part of the process, in my opinion. When you're able to think outside the box and find all these cool and interesting ways to play this game differently, it that's the, that's the most interesting part to me. And that video was the one that used the most exploits and cool, interesting facts about those games to make that challenge possible. So if I had to say, it'd be the multi-FNAF challenge. When did you start getting into FNAF challenges and why? Um, well, the first few videos on FNAF weren't even challenges. They were just AI breakdowns. Uh, but I always had the rule that if I was going to make a guide on something, I'd have to beat it myself, right? So no matter what I would do, if I was covering a subject on anything, I would always beat it myself. And the first technically ch technical challenge that I made was Five Nights at Freddy's uh, colon the blind run where I beat FNAF 1 blindfolded. And that was pretty cool. But I didn't get super into challenges. It was actually this summer when it hit. So I'm like, I was making AI breakdown videos and a, a video that I put so much effort into that it didn't flop, but it didn't like blow up like I thought it would was how fine to candies works full ai breakdown i built that video from scratch normally like when i'm making a guide on a game on a fnaf game when i'm explaining something i always have people to reference like i, I bring up brayden all the time in my videos because he knows literally everything so like when i want to when i want any information on anything in the main game i can ask him and he'll know right for fine to candies we didn't have that um we had PXH Ghost, who had a whole breakdown, but for Shadow Candy, the most complicated character in the game, there was no AI breakdown yet. So I had to actually buy Click Team and do it myself. And that was a long process. Plus, the challenge was super hard. The um, Shadow Candy plus 720. And the video didn't do that well. After all of the effort that I had put into it, it wasn't like it didn't go crazy like I thought it would. So. I was sitting in someone's server, I forget who, when Brayden just said, yeah, no doors is possible in FNAF 4. I was like, what? How? They don't They don't leave the doors. And I was like, no, just clear them from the doors. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I went into FNAF 4, put put on the radar, and saw, holy shit, they just leave the doors. What? So it was, it was crazy. And I was like, 
Okay, this is a free video. I'll just make this really quick. It's not a hard challenge. And then it exploded. FNAF 4 No Doors to this day is my most popular video. It's sitting at 795k views as we speak. And I was like, oh, so people like challenges. Well, challenges are a lot easier to make than AI breakdowns. So I'm like, you know what? Let's beat all three FNAF games at the same time. And that one blew up too. And I was like, that's what we're doing now. So now I just, now I do challenges. And it's a lot more fun. Challenges are way more fun than AI breakdowns. Way more fun. Because you can tell a story with them. Like, I, I incorporate that in my newer videos. I actually try and tell a story of my experience doing the challenge. That's why a lot of people say the rat and cat video was my best video. Because that told a story, right? So I think that's how I got into challenge videos pretty much. Which is realizing that they do better and that I have way more fun making them. So. Somewhat of a random question. Do you have siblings? I do. I have a sister who also is on YouTube. Uh, I can't say her name because it contains my last name. And I like to keep that private. But um, yeah, I have an older sister who is um, 13 years older than me, I believe. Um, and she also makes content uh, very different from mine. Not even close. Totally different areas of, of platform youtube whatever but yeah i have a i have an older sister i didn't really get to see her much growing up because 13 year age gap we, we're, we're half siblings we share a father so um by the time i was like conscious she had already pretty much moved out of the house and i was into college so i'm not like that close with her but i do have a, I do have a sister yeah do you stress a lot about youtube oh yeah yeah Oh my God, it's the worst. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, as I said before with the um, six hour thing, being the first person to do a challenge, that's a huge thing. Like just making sure you meet deadlines because now I used to, this is gonna go off of tangent, but I promise it'll make sense in a bit. I used to work at a movie theater, right? And I'm sorry if this is a future question. Um, I used to work at a movie theater and it was horrible i all the it was like a constant political war between my friends and i and our managers and we really we did, we have so much disdain for the general manager we hated that woman right so when i um quit that job i worked for two years there and i, I they, they led me on a, a promotion that i didn't get for one and a half years and i was like I am going to surpass this woman by the time that I'm her age. There's there's no two ways about it. I'm going to be better than this, this woman, this, my manager. So she made 50K a year. And I won't say how much I make on YouTube because it's kind of a scummy thing to do, but I make more than that, right? And as long as I'm making more than that, my inner drive to be superior to that woman is satisfied. So that's like what I stress about is getting videos out fast enough to prove that I am more than that stupid part-time theater job. I am more than how they treated me there. So a lot of my stress comes from making sure that I can get videos out on a consistent basis, not lose any audience retention or anything, because YouTube does reward consistency. Um, and yeah, just making sure that I can, because like to do it yourself, to, to, to be employed by yourself and like make this all yourself it's it's a it's a great like it's a good feeling you did it yourself right of course that helped from like my FNAF friends like Brayden and PXH but like majority of it I did myself I don't have an editor I don't have um I edit it all myself so a lot of the stress comes from making sure that you can keep that consistent basis because to do a challenge it takes anywhere from 10 to 20 hours on average and then to edit that video usually takes about 30 hours, if I, I did give an estimate. Um, maybe less than that, maybe like 20, I'd say. I haven't really counted. But I try to get a video out every week, and that's very, very taxing. I have about one day that I take a break on. I think it's, it's every Saturday I hang out with my homies. But other than that, it's like full-time grind because I'm not, I'm better than that movie theater. I'm a better person, I'm better, I'm worth more than that like cashier position. So it's like my motivation kind of to keep going. What achievement are you most proud of? Doesn't have to be FNAF. Yeah, that would be Dark Souls, no hit or no death SL1. 
So it's either that or the FNAF lock. Uh, I'm going to go on record here and say the FNAF lock is harder than Ratten Cat All Challenges. Um, even though max mode wise, that makes no sense at all, but I think it's harder than Ratten Cat All Challenges. Um, so for FNAF, it'd be the FNAF lock challenge. It's a world's first. I think still no one's done that to this day. Uh, and I'm still the only victor of that. Um, but my greatest achievement uh, is this like in gaming or just in general? In general. Okay, I have a few then. Um, when I was in school, I was super obsessed with grades. So when I managed to get top 10 in my class, as far as like the highest ranked, I was number six at my peak. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, I benching 225, bench pressing 225 pounds. That was a big thing I strived for for a long time, and I eventually did get it. And then in gaming, my greatest achievements is probably beating the perfect run from Super Mario Galaxy 2 at seven years old. And in modern day, beating Dark Souls um, the entire game without leveling, without dying. So that means that you can't level your character at all, and you it's a permadeath run. So if you die anywhere in the two hours you play in the game, you restart at the beginning. And to this day, that was the hardest challenge I've done. That's about to be topped. It's about to be beaten by a challenge I'm working on right now for a different game. That isn't FNAF. Um, I'll leave that private for now. But um, as far as currently completed achievements, that would be Dark Souls SL1, no death. I thought I heard that you lived in like a college dorm or something like that. So I do. I well, when I'm in when when college is in season, I live in a dorm. Yes. So from like August to or September to uh, December, and then January to like February more so to um june yeah i live in a dorm and then everywhere else at home so with that established uh have you ever gotten any noise complaints no i'm super quiet actually um i don't if you look at all the videos where i'm like raging super hard those are all in my house um an easy way to tell is the background if the background like or, or the angle of my face um if the background has like the dragon poster and the, like, pan the the two pandas, and it's just like a yellow kind of wall. That's my basement, which I can be as loud as I want, as long as it's not nighttime. Um, in college, I, I never actually raged like loudly, and I wouldn't do what I do here if I was in college. Um, I still haven't broken anything. Um, I, I will give you a, a little bit of an Easter egg. When I was younger, I was a tweaker. I was so angry. Um, I'm a lot more collected now, believe it or not. I used to be a lot worse. In middle school, during um, Prime Clash Royale, I broke an iPad over my knee um, because of Clash Royale. And there's a legendary moment playing Fortnite where I broke almost everything in my room. This is a little bit of a tangent, but I promise it'll be interesting. So when I was playing Fortnite with my friend, um, Sniper Team, who's in the Discord, this is when I was in, I think, Whenever I was in his prime, sixth, seventh grade. He was better than me in seasons like two to four. And I, you know me, I want to be the best. I'm, I, I, I'm, I love being be like the best at whatever I'm, I care about, like FNAF right now. So he said that he was the best player and that he carried me. And that really got under my skin, like getting carried in a game. I'm the best. I doesn't, that's not, that's not who I am. Um, so we're playing and I down and I like I get like totally down. So I'm out of the game. There's no reboot system at this point. And he, if he he says if, if, if I win the game, like I carried you, I carried you to this win. And my idea is like because back then win stats were all that mattered. If you have more wins than someone, you were the goat. So I wanted to get this win. But I didn't want to know that I that I carried him or that he carried me. So when the game is about to end, I try and leave to not get like to so I can say that no, you didn't carry me. I, I, I didn't get the win, but I, I messed up my inputs and I didn't leave and I got the win. And he just said like carried and I just lost it. I was screaming. I mean, he'll tell you the story too. sniper team in the discord. 
I was screaming. I threw my headset, broke it, broke my controller. I was so angry. I cannot take being carried. That was the, I was so angry. Um, so back in the day, I was a lot worse with raging. I was really bad. Ever since I, like, since I was a kid, I was always horrible with raging. And I've been able to control it a lot more in recent times and just like kind of yell in despair. But like raging back then was a lot more immature. I just lose and get mad. Now it's like legitimate pain because there's money and views and time on the, on the line when I, when I lose, when I rage. So that's more of the reason nowadays. But in my college dorm, I've never actually screamed, yelled, done anything. I'm not too loud. Actually, my roommates were a lot louder than me last year. So that was never a problem. Um, the most noise I would make would just be recording scripts, like recording voiceovers for videos. But yeah, I never gotten a noise complaint or anything. Nothing has ever really happened in college to me in that sense, no. What is your end goal for FNAF and YouTube? Um, my end goal for FNAF is to complete what I'm going to call the Max Mode Saga. Basically, if you see in the server nowadays, there's the UCM project, which is a combined project of animations for the 5020 No Death Coin run. Basically, it's going to feature my character, um, Bones, and some of his some of his homies fighting against like max mode characters. Um, and that series is going to progress with more and more animations until I reach Hopeless Pursuit. And the Hopeless Pursuit will be the finale of the Max Mode Saga. It will have the craziest animation with the craziest story. It'll be a build up to everything. It'll be super, super cool. That's my dream. My dream right now is the Max Mode Saga. Um, that's my end goal for FNAF is to beat Hopeless Pursuit and to complete the Max Mode Saga because Max Modes are so underlooked in the general FNAF community. The, the fraction of people that know about Max Modes compared to the actual FNAF community is super low and I want the Max Mode Saga to cast the FNAF Max Modes into the more broader public's eye. Because like, you ask any average FNAF fan, they haven't even played the games for one, they just watched Markiplier and MatPat explain the lore. Um, so when you ask him about 1020 mode in FNAF, you're like, that's, 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 that's impossible, no one beat 1020 mode. And like, I know Markiplier did it, actually he didn't, he cheated, but we're not talking about that right now. Um, but yeah, 1020 mode's impossible. You can't be 1020 mode. 5020 mode, what? That's insane. And there's like all these things that are so much harder that no one knows about. So I'm hoping the Max Mode Saga will cast that into the mainstream FNAF community's light. That would be so, so cool if Max Mode's got like mainstream attention. Um, for FNAF, that's my all-time goal. For YouTube, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I'd love to make more uh, videos on games that aren't FNAF, but... Once I'm done Hopeless Pursuit, that might be my time to go. At least not make like things that are super, um, like super high stakes. I understand that I'm not gonna be one of those YouTubers that just like kind of wastes away. Like, you know, people from the, era, the 2010 era where they just keep making videos and it's like, you know, they put like 10K views nowadays and they have like a, a million subs. You know, it's like, come on, man. I, I, I will be able to recognize when it's my time to go and I won't like slowly die off. I'll go out with a bang, you know? I'm not gonna just like waste away. I'll, I'll know my time is to go. And then at that point, I'll probably just make chill videos like on the second channel, just talking maybe, just, just like giving advice from my perspective as a creator or just my life. But I won't go super hard on like challenges and gaming and doing all this crazy every week. I'll just like be a chill uh, figure in the community that talks every now and then, but I won't be like the the king or whatever. Like once I'm done Hopeless Pursuit, my big presence will probably be done, I think. That was all the questions. Yeah, dude, did you get a good response, do you think? I think so, almost an hour of recording, like four or so minutes, I don't know. Oh, hell yeah, nice. Thank you so much for letting this be possible. Oh, of course, dude. I I, I love, um, I love interviewing people, and I, I love being interviewed. So, this is great. Trust me, I enjoyed it. Thank you, and I guess that's it. Yeah, have a good one, man.